Hello guys and welcome back to my van build series. Today is going to be all about my electrical system. And before I start, you might already notice something in the background that hasn't been there before. And that's because I made a break in filming. The reason why I haven't been um, filming that much lately is because I realized that I'm kind of running out of time, obviously, always, you know, with these kind of builds. It's always happening. And honestly, I need a little bit of a break from all this. Because, you know, it's a lot of work building this van, obviously, but then it's extra work to, you know, record all of this. And um, there's a lot of work in this that you don't really see. Um, so anyway, doesn't matter. From now on, I hope I will be more regular in documenting my pro process and let me show you what I did so far. I've been living in my 1979 Mercedes camper for two years now. I love that van, but it was itching me to do my own conversion. Alone and without any experience, I sold my old van and started with my very own van build. So right when you come in, you already notice some little details and those are these switchboards here and here and back here there's another one and in the back there is another one and those boards, they hold all of the switches and I made them myself, they're out of wood and let me show you what they look like. So this here is one of the switch panels and um, I just made them out of a really thin piece of wood. And I used relatively soft wood, the same wood that I used here and there and everywhere, um, fur. So actually it was quite tricky to make them. But in the end, I think they turned out really nicely. So this is the switch panel for the seating area. And as you can see, there's a USB plug uh, with uh, five volts and uh, 12 volt cigarette lighter kind of thing plug. And then there are two switches for the fan and the seat heating. So this is one, and there's a second one up here, those are for the lights and that's the other uh, heating. And then those are for the water pump and the water maker, in a way. Um, those are not connected yet, but the other ones are connected already. And then, so one in the back here that also has a USB plug and the two light switches. Um, so down here, you can see some of the wiring going through here and there. And they're not really attached to the sides yet. I'm going to fix those in a minute. But I wanted to show you these two guys because those are the thermostats for the heating faucets that are in the floor. Let me show you what's behind here because the, I think the most changes were made back there. So this is what the back of the van looks like right now. Um, you can already see this giant piece of electronic mess which basically holds all of the electrical parts and components that i'm using for my van build so you can see this battery here and then there's another one over here i think you saw me putting these in but i've attached these um with a frame now so they're nice and secure and they're all wired up everything's wired up i'm just missing a few pieces to complete my electrical system and um but I will give you a quick one th run through the setup that I have right now. Yeah, let's have a look at it. Oh, but before I go through all the details of this electrical system, uh, just let me show you what I built on the roof. So welcome to the roof of my van. And you can already see that there are solar panels up here. Um, there's one, two in this corner, you can see that one. And then there's another one uh, where you're standing at right now. They are plugged in, you can see the cable it's running through here. They're all plugged in with the solar system already, which is great. It's working great. It's, well, there's, there have been some problems, but we'll jump into that a little bit later. Those solar panels are not attached to the roof yet, but what I have done or what I have attached is the wood of the solar deck. I ran some, some screws through the wood into the metal beams here, and then the solar panels are just put on top. I will attach them a little bit later. So the solar panels that are up here right now are three times 175 watts. And I have another 100 watt panel that is not on here now. So this is the solar setup that I had originally planned. So it's three 175 watts solar panels and one 100 watts. And 
I already knew before that it might be problematic. This one has a different amperage and a different voltage. So um, if it had the same voltage, I could just uh, put them in parallel. If it had the same amperage, I could just put them in, uh, in series and it would be fine. But because it is two, it's different in two different ways, um, I can't use this one. So yeah, this panel has to go. That's it for the roof. And then let's go down to the system. This is where the two solar cables come out from the roof and they go into a tube all the way down to here. They come out there and they go all the way over to the solar charge controller, which is the blue box there. This solar charge controller obviously needs to be connected to the batteries. So it is connected here with this black and red cable one down to the plus and one to the minus. And then this battery, you can see these really thick cables, is connected to the other battery. And the reason why this is such a thick cable is because um, it's normally you want to place the two batteries right next to each other, but I wanted to place them uh, in this exact position because of better weight distribution so I decided to just go for a much thicker cable so it balances out that distance. So this is basically the energy generating part of the circuit. The solars are wired up in series. The solar is coming into the charge controller then the charge controller is giving the charge to the batteries and then the batteries are connected to each other. So that's part one of the system. And uh, now the next thing I want to do, obviously, when I have charged batteries, I want to get this um, electricity to the things that need the electricity, like lights, USB plugs, the cigarette lighter plugs, um, the heat foils and stuff like that. So the minus cable of the batteries um, goes into this big switch here that we have. So this is the dead switch with which you can um, basically deconnect all of the things that need electricity um, from the batteries. So that's just for security um, and it's pretty handy to just switch off everything for wiring so that I don't get an electric shock. Anyway, so this goes into here and then continues up into this big boy. And the other part, um, the red cable here, goes all the way up into the, onto the other side of this panel here. And so this is a fuse box. This fuse box is great because it has two purposes. For, uh, first of all, it holds all of the fuses. Let me show you. The second purpose it has is that it distributes your electricity basically to um, the different parts where it's supposed to go. Um, this is where the positive wire comes in um, from the batteries. And then these all here are the positives of all of my things that I need electricity. And then um, down here, is where the negative pole comes in and then everything, all the negatives um, or the ground wires, they go here. And um, in order to close the circuit, you have to insert some fuses in these sockets. And as you can see, I already, um, I already put in the fuses. Maybe you usually don't do it as messy. I am completely new to electrics, so um, this is, you know, that's just my solution, that's what I came up with. And um, so first of all, it probably makes sense to show you all the lights that I have. So um, from this point up here, there's a red, red wire going into this LED dimmer. And I'm connecting all of my lights that I can dim, which are right now all of, them, all of the ones that I have installed, um, into this dimmer. And um, then there's a negative wire running here into the negative pole here. Quite simple. So let's first start with the positive part. So on the positive side, there's a wire running to this bus bar here. Let me just show you what this looks like. It's a really high quality um, bus bar that is totally overkill for my application. But back then I didn't know which ones to use, so I used this expensive one. So anyway, this cable is going in here. And then there are three other wires that are distributing the electricity to the other ones. So maybe a little bit of an easier explanation or easy example is um, this one here. So this is the USB outlet that you saw from the other side. 
And this one's really simple because there's no complicated wiring going anywhere. So it's really just this plus cable going into here, coming out of here, connected to this side, and then the minus that goes through the same thing. But here it comes out as this black cable and goes into the minus pole. So this is the basic setup that you need um, to know for connecting anything to this fuse block. One thing that might be interesting is this little guy here. This is the Victron Energy Blue Power Bluetooth thing um, that is connected to the solar charge controller and this lets you connect to the solar charge controller via a Bluetooth with your phone with an app and this is how you can check your solar power stuff from the app. So the light comes in from here and takes one of these wires. Let's say we are taking this one. So this red cable goes into this tube and into this black thing over there. All the way through here, you can actually see it peeking through here. And then on the other side of this switch panel, and that is, okay, that gets a bit confusing, but I think uh, this one, <laughs> this one here. And then there, so this one goes into the switch that is here. So that switch is for the lights in the center. And um, these other two cables run through back here again to where this came from and then through here over there to this switch panel and then from there there's a red another red cable that goes all the way up to these lights here and then they distribute get into these lights get back into a black cable that goes all the way down here comes out there in this one back to this thing so you might be wondering why is there so much cables involved into just one light and why are there two switches and why do they have to be connected with two cables that's a little bit more complicated actually my light switch is there <laughs> maybe a little bit over complicated but i'll show you what this is supposed to be first of all we switch on the master switch Not very spectacular, but now if we switch on the light switch for this one, over here. And there's light, and then the other light switch should put it put on this light. Now, these switches are on. I have the other switch panel over here, and if I switch this panel off, this switch is off as well. And then if I do this, this one switches off too. But now, I can switch them on again from here. That's great, right? So that's it. That's the double switch setup installed. And there's one more thing that I haven't shown you yet that also has something to do with the lights. So check this out, guys. This here is the remote control for the LED dimmer that I showed you earlier. With this thing here, I can also just switch off the light like that, switch it back on, and then obviously dim the light. But yeah. That's also a thing. So I could just leave on the lights like that and then switch them on and off with this um, remote control. So next thing I'm gonna do is finally attach these solar panels to the roof and I'm going to use a joint on one side and an angle on the other side. All right, so make sure that everything So you can already see that if I'm tilting these ones away, I have all of the space back and I can use it for something else, just, you know, for sitting or whatever. Um, yeah, so this is half of the job done. Next half will be to attach these angles that are already prepared with a bigger hole to the solar panels. So that's that installed. I actually already did the two other ones that this camera is standing on right now. And I think a thunderstorm is coming, so I'm feeling a little bit dizzy up here. Um, which is not that good if you're standing on a roof and you might fall down, so that's why I'm going down. 
but it's fine because I'm done here and let's see what we can do and feel less dizzy.